What's up guys and welcome to today's video. This is the third day of my 2023 training split. It is the pull day, so we're focusing on back and some biceps. Previous two days was the push day and the leg day it is the third consecutive day of training. So the last day where I'm gonna give it everything I've got and then I'll be having a rest day on the fourth day, okay? So let's get started. A little bit of a quick warm up, and then we will crack on with the first exercise, which is gonna be the T-bar row. And we're ready to go. So we found ourselves a lovely T-bar row. As I've mentioned before in previous videos, the reason why I like T-bar row is because you have the chest support. So you don't have to put yourself in a position where you're relying upon your core strength to keep your body fixed in place. Usually a lot of people tend to fatigue in their lower back first before their upper back fatigues. Grip positioning, it's really up to you and what part of your back you wanna focus on. Wider grip with the elbows flared a little bit more is gonna focus more on the upper back, rear delts, traps, rhomboids. The closer grip where your hands are in more of a neutral position means your elbow is gonna be closer to your torso and you're gonna be hitting more of your lats. Today and for the following four or five weeks, I wanna focus more on my lats. So we will be going with the narrow grip. First set is a little bit of a warm up one. So just getting everything prepared firing up the back muscles, initiating the working muscle, which is the lats. So we'll retract first and then pinch. Relax, retract, pinch, relax, and pinch. So we're gonna do three working sets, eight reps each. Tempo, nothing too crazy, two seconds down. One second pause at the bottom, I'm gonna pull up we're not squeezing at the top for too long. We still wanna get the squeeze though, but we don't need to hold it. Because it's eight reps, we'll be able to go relatively heavy. I'll be starting off with 50 kilograms. We'll see how that feels. And then if it's too easy, I'll bump it up a little bit. Go a bit heavier. That one second pause at the bottom is just allowing me to fully lengthen and just allow myself to gain a bit of composure so I can go in for the following rep. We'll be giving ourselves 90 seconds rest for this exercise. We're going heavy, it's a compound movement, so need a little bit longer to recover, but only 90 seconds. Add a little bit more weight and I have strapped myself up just to, uh, I don't know, just so I can focus more on just pulling and sticking to solid form without having to worry too much about squeezing the handle and not losing my grip. Good. And just keep in mind when you are doing a T-bar row, don't pull your torso away from the pad. Keep the pad in contact with your entire torso, okay? Otherwise you end up cheating a little bit, making it easier. And then you move it onto your upper back, which is not what you wanna do. One more set to go. As this week one, we're not doing anything crazy in terms of drop sets or anything like that. If I had a spotter, I would get them to gently assist me as I reach failure. However, there is no spotter today, so I'm just gonna have to do my best to grind it out. Eight is the target. If I can do more, then that's good news. Realistically, next week, I should be adding a five on top of this. Just about the last rep was a bit uh, 
not the best, but good enough. On to the next exercise. A little bit of body fat has been gained over the festive period, but it will come off quickly. Go on, Lee, let's get it off. Let's see what we're working with. Oh. Next exercise we're doing is we're going to do a single arm pull down variation. As many ways you could do this, you could do it with a cable, get on your knee, cable crossover machine, just pull it down. Or if you have the appropriate apparatus, we can do a single arm pull down plate loaded machine. So I'm going to use this one, a very ancient looking hammer strength machine assembled in 1993, still doing absolute bits, battered by the harsh summers in Dubai. Anyway, Press it down, knees in position, hand here. Initiate the movement by pulling shoulder back, Doof, like that. That's how we move it. And then drive with the elbow. I feel like it's easier to just hold it here instead of here. Steady, certainly needs loading up with an extra 20, dare I say. It's a 15, but let's just pretend it's 20, okay? I miss working out topless. For me, it feels twice as motivating to train topless because you're constantly reminded about the current state of your body fat percentage. So when you're not happy with it, like when I'm, like for me, I'm not as lean as I could be. And I look at myself and I'm like, not disgusted, but disappointed. I'm like, I'm better than this. I can be leaner than this. I need to sort my diet out. I need to do a bit more cardio. So I'm just constantly looking at this reflection in front of me. You fat, fat bastard. Let's go. 10 beautiful repetitions. Three second negative. When I stick to these slow negatives, I will always feel it the following few days. If there's any three or four second negatives on my back routine, oh, it's nasty. Oh. Right, last set. Jesus, that was pretty much all I could do while sticking to that tempo. I feel as though the, the right lat still has a better contraction, or at least it's harder for me to get the same contraction on the left side. So moving forward, I will be starting each set with the left side whilst I'm sort of mentally and physically fresher. And you guys should do that as well. If there's any imbalances or you feel as though you have a weaker side, always start with the weaker side. And if you need to, do an extra working set on the weaker side as well. Maybe two extra working sets on the weaker side. So reverse pec deck, what we're gonna do, lean forward ever so slightly, push your shoulders forward. And we wanna try and keep our scapula fixed in position, keeping the shoulders fixed in position and imagine that you're just trying to create the biggest arc possible with your hands. So you're constantly pushing out as far as you possibly can do, okay? We're trying to minimize the amount of back engagement and just focus on the rear delts.
If you do it properly, you should notice that you, during the set, particularly near the end, you feel a burn on your rear delt. You should start to get a little bit pumped. We just basically don't want to be going like that. If you do that, you start to incorporate too much of your upper back muscles. Push forward and then pop, pop. Yeah, short rest period in between this, just 60 seconds. Tasty. How many sets have I given myself? With each progressive week, we're gonna be doing one additional set more. So just three sets, week one. Last set, basically it's gonna to go to failure with a couple of partials on this. It's not on the plan. So if you're just getting back into a routine or you've had a bit of time off from the gym, no need to go crazy in week one or week two. But obviously I've been training consistently so I can handle a little, a little bit extra. Next one we're gonna do is single arm cable row. If you wanted to sub this with another one, you could do a single arm hammer row. Any, basically, what we're gonna do now is a single arm row. But I suggest you do the single arm cable row. One arm at a time, you get a really good range of motion, great squeeze, and it just gives you more time to focus on one side at a time. As well, we can iron out any imbalances. So as I mentioned, the left side was feeling a bit funky on the pull down. I'm going to start with the left side. So torso upright. I'm going to drive my elbow into my hip. Ten reps, ten reps. Same again, one plate heavier. Arguably a little bit too easy, so we're gonna have to go heavier. Holy shit, that needs oiling so bad. Oh my God. The resistance was going like this throughout the lift. One more plate, I think so. Nice, managed to squeeze out 12. Whoa. How's the back looking, bruh? By the way, guys, if you need anybody to chop up your existing content, or you need somebody to help you with creating reels, or TikToks, or YouTube shorts, check out that guy, Elvis. What's the name of your, what's the name of your company? Explode. 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 So this guy does all of my TikToks, my shorts, and reels and he's looking for more people to work with so hit him up uh, Elvis Cruiser Explode Media you can explode your page like Mike's Let's yes go. I felt like an absolute day and age setting that up we will be doing a superset now with some trap work and bicep work so we'll do some shrugs ideally if your gym has it the hex bar because it's putting your arms and hands in a position which is most natural for you to elevate and depress. When the bar's out in front of you, it restricts it. If it's behind, it restricts it. If it's neutral, side by side, all the way up, all the way down. If you can't do the hex bar, maybe use dumbbells or a machine. Barbell's not the end of the world. So we're gonna do that, and then we're gonna go straight on to bicep curl. Three second negative, 
Now with the bicep curl, I would recommend using an easy bar. A little bit more joint friendly for the elbows, but uh, I'm an absolute savage, so I'll be using a straight bar. No, I'm not savage really. My elbows are absolutely fine, so a little bit of straight bar work is no problemo. Make sure you put it down safely, keeping your spine neutral. Just the eight reps, 10 reps for the shrugs. Get some tremendous forearm engagement and fatigue whenever you really slow down the reps. So that three seconds, three, two, one. You're gonna feel it. So stick to it. 90 second rest in between. All supersets that you do in your routine should be 90 seconds in between. If it don't make dollars, it don't make sense. Ah. Last exercise of the day is the notorious Dumbbell Preacher Curl. Again, probably one of my favorite bicep exercises purely because it keeps yourself locked in position. There's no cheating. So we're gonna destroy the biceps. 10 reps each arm. We will have 60 second rest in between both arms. As always, start with the weaker arm. And then last set, we'll just take it to failure with some assisted reps. My right bicep is a little bit more dominant, so we'll start with the left. Make sure your elbow is pointing downwards. Don't curl at an angle. Your elbow ain't gonna like that. First set is always the easiest. self-explanatory. Oh God, it's getting hard. Right. <sighs> so if you feel as though the second set, you just like lost loads of your strength, I'd probably advise you go a little bit lighter. It's not the end of the world. Alternatively, you could just keep with the same weight and assist yourself on the last few reps. But if you reach failure by the fifth rep, 
the weight is too heavy. I recommend you just drop it by a couple, maybe it's two kilos. The left is stronger. One more set to go. Last set of the day. Let's take it to failure, baby. Done. One hour, 10 minutes. Sounds about right. What more can I say? That is my complete split. So what I'll do, as I said before, the fourth day, which is tomorrow, will be my rest day. I'll try as much as possible just to focus on recovery. So keeping the heart rate low, minimizing strain. Maybe I'll do a little bit of cardio, low intensity, steady state cardio, just to increase this, the step count and uh, keep the calorie expenditure high just also to keep the good habits in place. So um, core, again, I could do some extra core and cast if I wanted to on that day, but at the moment I don't really need to. I've done core on the push day. So uh, I'm, to be honest, I'm still feeling it a little bit from the push day, so that is that. If you want to get involved with the app, I suggest you do so on the website, thirstofficial.com. It'll be the best investment you make of 2023 for sure. Thanks for watching. Make sure you check out the other two videos if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one.